and venerable religious, and dear parishioners, we have before our eyes today a most grief-stricken mother. She is the purest, the holiest, the most blessed and spotless creature of God. And yet she is called upon to suffer more than anyone else other than, of course, her son, Jesus Christ. And even though Our Lady is in her heavenly glory and has been so for the last nearly 2,000 years, nevertheless, it is entirely correct for us to think of her as sorrowful, to think of her as suffering. Not that she's suffering now, but in her lifetime, she endured all these things. And if we never had a feast of the sorrowful mother, we tend to think of it as so far in the past. And so the church puts before our eyes the sorrowful and suffering mother. It's good for us to think of her as though it were happening now. And it gives us that opportunity to visualize ourselves on Calvary. And so we look at this most wonderful of all mothers. And yet, what a cost of suffering has been imposed upon her. I was reflecting earlier that every mother has to suffer. Every mother, at times anyway, is sorrowful. And I'd like to make a comparison between this perfect mother and all other mothers. Why is our Blessed Mother sorrowful? Is it because her child has been in any way sinful, wayward, imperfect? Of course not. Our Blessed Mother is the most perfect mother in that regard, and of course she has the most perfect child. She could not suffer any sorrow insofar as failure on the part of her child. But all other mothers do have to see their children's imperfection, their children's sinfulness. Their, their children are not perfect. They are going to fall spiritually, and sometimes we see mothers, Catholic mothers, grieving and sorrowing over their children who have fallen away from the faith or who are living in a life of you know, manifest sin. I think of St. Monica, the mother of St. Augustine. It crucified her heart to see her son Augustine living such a sinful life for so many years. So mothers do sorrow over their children's spiritual falls. Our Lady didn't over her son Jesus. But remember this, we were adopted on Calvary. And so our Blessed Mother, in becoming our mother through supernatural adoption, grieves and suffers and sorrows over our sins. Never forget that. How much Our Lady has, to, has had to suffer for our sins. And we see, we're, we're so fortunate here in our chapel to have the picture or, or represented to us, our redemption, Jesus on the cross, Jesus giving his mother away to St. John, woman, behold thy son, and then, of course, to St. John's son, behold thy mother. And at least from that moment on, Our Lady now has the burden of sorrowing over all of our sinfulness. We can never repay her for all of that. So our Blessed Mother 
sorrows over our sins. But what other sufferings did she have? She had, obviously, the suffering of seeing Jesus suffer and die before her very eyes. The gospel says she stood on Calvary. And I think most theologians and spiritual writers would say she did not collapse. She did not faint on Calvary, although what she was going through was enough to make her do that. It shows her valiant endurance. She stood at the cross. And that speaks worlds to us, does it not? That, and remember, God asked her to be there not just to witness the death of Jesus in such extreme agony, but also to literally co-offer Jesus with him, himself offering himself to his father. She was asked to be there as a co-offerer, and this is why she's co-redemptrix. She was on Calvary to offer the sacrifice. It may not be the most clearly manifest thing, but she is offering the death of Jesus to the Heavenly Father because that's what she was asked to do. So no sufferings over any deficiency of what ever kind on the part of Jesus, but the suffering to see him suffer. And this is what causes mothers to also grieve and sorrow over their children, even over their very good children. They're not weeping over any sinfulness or bad things their children are doing, but a mother hurts for her children. When a child is suffering, the mother's heart is taking that on. And the mother maybe instinctually or instinctively would like to take that suffering away. We think of, you know, I, want to, I don't want my child to suffer. I want my child to be happy and, and, and pain-free and, you know, not have these challenges. But here's the point. Suffering deepens us. Suffering helps us to grow spiritually much more than the good times, the easy times, pleasure. So as a mother looks at her children and sees them suffering, again, she overcomes perhaps that first instinct to take it all away. I mean, obviously, if a child's got a, you know, suffering, you know, hurt himself or herself, the mother's, that's the mother, you know, fixes that wound, that, that pain, you know, gets, gets it taken care of. But obviously, there are many sorrows and sufferings that a mother can't take away from her child. But let us be assured through the very example of Jesus and Mary themselves, that suffering brings about so much good. This is why we, there's the value of the cross, carrying the cross in our daily lives. And when we look at the sorrowful mother, what was all that suffering doing to her? It was deepening her. It was making her even greater. God made her so great through so many infused virtues and gifts things that Our Lady did not merit. I mean, it was God's gift to her. But when Our Lady was offering up all of her suffering, suffering for Jesus, suffering because of the other people's sufferings, and of course suffering over the sinfulness of mankind, God, she was making that gift to God. She was deepening, she was growing, and she merited so much more than what just God gave to her. So let us reflect deeply upon this sorrowful mother. We will always be inspired by her. Know that she did it for you, not just collectively, but individually. And know that even now, even though, again, as we know, in heaven she's not suffering, she still has a mother's compassion. 
She knows what you're going through in life. She's with you. She's helping you through it. She knows how much good those crosses do for you when you bear those crosses. So she's not asking the Heavenly Father to take it all away. But she is interceding for you and helping you to carry your cross. And she's helping you to reach your heavenly destiny. So never, or just try to keep growing in your appreciation of what your heavenly mother does for you to make you more and more pleasing to the heavenly father. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen.